All right, well, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you can tell, I, we've recorded this video the exact same day as the last video. So now we actually have a little bit of content. So my good old friend Shimano, actually, long story short, I actually really like Shimano stuff a lot more than Shram right now. Um, but, oh wow, watch it. Okay, it's barely doing it right now, but this brake lever right now is creaking a little bit. And last time that I had this happen, it's a little bit of grit and crap in the brake lever. So on camera, we will take it apart and get it all straight out. So welcome to my workshop. Um, any long viewers of this channel before the reboot um, will actually know this place, except this wasn't here. There's a whole ton less stuff in here. Uh, no bikes, no skis, none of this stuff was in here because I just moved in. But we have to first clear off the stand. This is my, <laughs> This frame is apparent was a, is apparently worth uh, twelve thousand uh, dollars. Highly doubt that. This is a two thousand eight specialized Pro Enduro. Um, actually, it's a pretty cool looking frame. It's a very much of that era when it's um, I don't know if they stamped it or if they like did like whatever the water thing is, but it's a really cool looking frame. Um, but it came with a fork that's absolute trash. It's in that box. It needs probably a rebuild if not being fully replaced. Um, and also came with a rear shock that's in actually halfway decent condition. Every single bearing is terrible. Um, it came with cranks that were super worn, a bottom bracket that was super not good, and half the bolts on it are already stripped. So that's kind of the current project, just a cool old um, 26 inch full suspension bike. But that goes on the ground where it deserves to be on right now. So we're gonna get this thing ready to put the track up into it. Now, in all honesty, I could probably do this without even putting, in, putting it into the stand, but it's almost easier just for it to physically hold the bike up, or not even, not even like hold it up off the ground, but just to hold it from tipping over. So the workshop videos probably are gonna be real common, just because. They're pretty easy for us to shoot. I work on my bike a lot. I also work on Braden's bikes a lot when they're over here. But unlike Braden, any tiny little maintenance issue with my bike really bugs me. So I so I tend to almost overwork on my bikes. I would say out of my three like bikes that had a daily job. I would say like I daily drive. Each one of them are in the stand at least once every other week. Okay, so now that that's in the stand, we have a Trek x cowl in the stand. We still got a little bit of a squeaky brake lever, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the Allen key that fits that grip. I forget what it is. We're gonna try three mil first. Oh yeah, it was a three mil. It's like I've taken these grips off a few times. These are the best grips in the world. Um, you'll probably hear me say this countless times about one-up stuff and about Trek, but two companies I absolutely love. I'm trying to convince myself to get a set of the one-up carbon bars and the one-up stem, so then I can also put an EDC kit in here. But that's a lot of money that I don't know if I want to spend right now. So, yeah, so I love 1UP stuff, because I got a 1UP chain ring down there, I have the 1UP composite pedals, uh, I got the wrong Allen key. I suppose I could just use the one that is on my, the one that is on my stand, but those are Harbor Freight and these are Bond, Bondus. Don't sue me. Okay, so we now have our brake lever removed, and it seems to be moving pretty smoothly. I don't feel many bubbles in it, so that's pretty good. So I'm actually gonna put this on here temporarily. Actually, I just thought of a fantastic idea. I'm gonna put it right here at the end of the bars and just kind of lightly put it down there so that I can very easily work on it without it dangling everywhere. And it's not dangling everywhere. Now where's my, yet again, don't sue me, my uh, workshop Red Bull. We found these for, we found these free on the trail. Um, there's just like boxes of them sitting on the trail. I'll see like like I'll take free rebels. 
All right, so what most likely is doing the creaking is this joint right here that in which the brake lever moves off of. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the smallest freaking Allen key because that's what this thing is. And I'm going to, the lighting is fantastic. That is extreme sarcasm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back out the whatever this screw is. I need a bigger workshop, right, Brandon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I backed out whatever that screw is. So according to Shimano, there should, on all their schematics, there should be a bolt behind it that should let that go, but I doubt that. Where's my flashlight? How come I don't have a flashlight here? And of course, Brandon's using my phone, so I can't use that as a flashlight. Really? I don't have a flashlight here. <laughs> I will give you my phone, but it's dead. Um, okay, how do I actually not have any form of a flashlight device? Okay. Yeah, there is no screw in, in there to be found. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going <laughs> to take a trusty toothbrush. Mountain biker's best friend. And I'm just going to clean this. So I'm just trying to get out any grit that could be in here. Because this is a bike that is falling out of the stand because I didn't tighten it enough. This stand is straight Chinese. So I'm just going to try to clean as best as I can inside that joint. And I can almost guarantee you what this is from. So, a little switch, opening day 2021, which was like two weeks ago, maybe, yeah, two weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago? Yeah, it's two yeah. weeks ago. Um, little switch, opening day. Fantastic, like, thing to think about, getting to hit your downhill park after a long winter, and finals are done, and school, and semester went good. And then, so you show up here, now granted it's clear skies down, down here, and you show up in uh, Slinger, Wisconsin, and it's raining. And you're here like, okay, um, this place is definitely not going to destroy your destroy the trail, so why are they going to break the news? That they're going to refund our money and let, us, and let us go home nice and dry. Well, they didn't. <laughs> and they didn't. And we got very wet. Who was... We, cause we only were, we only rode for maybe about an hour before we were like, yeah, this sucks. Cause there was no traction. Like one of my favorite things at Switz is all their wooden stuff. It's all their wooden stuff. And I couldn't do any of that stuff because there's no traction. And a lot of them actually had it blocked off. So it wasn't even like, don't even call me a wimp on that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, like it's. It was not a very fun time. That's the best way to put it. Okay, so. Um, I really wish I could have taken that all the way apart. If you guys know, I know that we definitely don't have that many mountain bikers in the comments right now. If we have, even have one, I'll be amazed. Um, if you are a mountain biker in the comment, let me know. Uh, you, you'll get a shout out next video. You'll get a shout out to all the 50 subscribers that we have here on what used to be a gaming channel. Um, So... So that is now pretty freely moving. I feel like I got a lot of the crap out of there. I'm just gonna try it a little bit more. So when when our bikes got absolutely wet, of course everything was super muddy. And like this bike was, it was like, you know, Santa Cruz's brown color. That's like what this bike was. It was not this nice bright Viper Red. It was, it was brown. And uh, my bike was riding inside the car, so my car got to get all dirty. Well, Braden's bike was on the bike rack, so his bike got all wet. <laughs> I don't know which one was better in that scenario. So, what I'm going to do is I got a little bit of aerosol chain lube here. Uh, I'm going to get a little cuff that's better than this. Um, I'm not using a shot glass. You'd swear after how many years I've been in this workshop that I would know where everything is. 
You know what? I'm actually going to try some. I'm going to do something a little bit different here. So I'm going to quickly put a bit of solvent. This is just some isopropyl alcohol. I'm just going to put a bit of solvent on my toothbrush here. I'm going to dry it off a little bit because I don't want to use too much solvent here. Now I'm just going to clean this off a little bit more. We are pulling up some black stuff, which is good because that is contaminated lubricant. I'm not a professional. Um, I do what works. I am the straight definition of a, hey, this comes out, does it? This does come out. I have a thing that came out. Um, does that help us in our endeavors? I need light. <laughs> that does not help us in the endeavors of making this come out. So, that's still in there. So, I'm just going to kind of keep that nice and clean. I'm trying to avoid just blasting lube into that because I know that's probably not a good idea. You guys are probably like, oh, it's fine. Or, no, you're stupid. Bring to a butt shop. That's probably going to be... If we, if we get any popular, that's probably going to be 100% of our comments on these videos. Bring it to a bike shop, you're stupid. <laughs> but granted, we only have like two good bike shops. Okay, so we have four bike shops around here. Two of them are trash. Wait, how many bike shops do we have? No. One of them is absolute garbage. That's a, that's a whole story. We'll probably make a whole video about this story. But, long story short, never stepping foot in that establishment ever again in my entire life. And, well, what we'll probably do just to make it even sweeter is that we'll probably... I don't know if I want to put that lube in there. Brayden, what do you think? I think a little bit won't hurt. Just a little bit? Just a little bit. I'm going gonna, gonna to get a nice lube application device. I may just spray it like super far away, just super. I can already feel the rage. <laughs> All right, you're not gonna want to stand there. Oh yeah, good point. Okay, spray it in just a little bit of lube. Now we're actually gonna let that sit right there, so all like the excess lube can kind of dry off. And I know that's gonna attract grit there. I don't care. I don't care because. Your bricks are kind of out of the way. Yes, that is chain lube. Um, I actually, in my mind, chain lube is a fantastic just light lubricant. For several things, just, for several things besides just bikes. Um, yeah, it's, just a, it's just a really nice light lubricant. It's pretty sticky. It, it retracts most dirt. So, I would imagine that this is nice and clean, and pretty good right now. Okay. How long is this video, Brayden? You know? We are at 13 minutes. Holy crap, this video is long. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Um, I don't know if this will get cut down. We may not cut this down just so you can hear all my blabbering. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do here. Get, Oop. get my grease. I'm just going to grease these threads a little bit. I don't know if you need to, but I've always found it's good practice anytime you have some threads on a bicycle, it's a good idea to grease them. Because usually, well, not, not these ones. These are definitely not. Well, actually, they kind of are because you're pushing on them. But most threads on a bicycle are load-bearing. So when they, um, I suppose all threads are really load-bearing, but... Most thread, most threads on a bicycle have direct torque applied to them, so there's, so any so any slop, which there always is because that's mechanical systems. Um, this is always a pain. Come on, okay, I think that did. Okay, I'm just gonna get this started, and then I'm gonna show you one of my hacks. This is probably not really a hack. This is probably something that bike shops have done for years. Okay, so just gonna get this started, going back in there. Okay, now I'm gonna get my bigger Allen key. I think it was a four mil that removed this, or it could have been a five mil. It was a five mil. Um, I forgot what I was gonna do. 
forgot what it's talking about. Um, it's talking about my hack, and then I, I think I was talking about something more important before that. I don't know. Probably some random barb garbling. But this doesn't really apply much right now, but when we get more popular, I really don't, or if we get more popular, it's probably the term I should use. Um, if we get more popular, I really like to know, like, what do you guys like? More of an uncut while, me, while I'm just blabbering on. But, I don't know. I don't know how interesting I am. Braden doesn't have much to say right now, so I'm just keep on talking. Yeah, I'm a pretty quiet guy. So, all that I'm doing is I'm just lining these two up as best as I can. So that, A, I can see how much thread is poking out on both of these. And, B... So I can kind of just see the angle of the brake lever. That's pretty close, I'd say. Pretty close, because these are a pain to adjust these screws um, once they're actually on the bar. Okay, so I'm just going to have it loosely on the bar. I'm going to quickly feel it. I don't feel any creaking. And I don't hear any creaking. So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten it down. We're going to apply a little bit more force to it and see if it still creaks. And if it still creaks, then I'm going to go cry in the closet. And we're going to cut the video. That's the closet right there. Actually, yeah, that closet is big enough for me to crawl in and cry. I do not feel any creaking. I would say that's a pretty good success. So we're going to get this bike reassembled. I'm going to move this brake lever just in a little bit more. I'm going to feel that one more nice, good, no creak. Now, the fact that I think we put a little bit of lube in there is probably pretty good because I'd imagine when they assembled it, they used a very light lubricant on all this stuff. And probably when it got absolutely hosed, because I've only been having this problem after this bike got absolutely wet, um, it probably washed away whatever lubricant they had. I haven't had any issues with this one, but I don't know. Actually, so the handlebars are sitting like this on the little switch chairlift. So I don't know. So the handlebars are sitting one way on the little switch chairlift because you just kind of hook it over the back because they don't do any modifications. You really have to be there to kind of understand how they how, how they run their chairlift. But one one brake lever will see a lot more water than the other one. Okay, so I'm just making sure that this grip is all the way in. I'm gonna get a three mil. Just gonna check and make sure that this grip is lined up with the other one because these have nice little fins that reduce arm pump. I used to actually get really bad arm pump, pump, especially downhill. Our first time riding downhill at uh, Highland in New Hampshire, we were on rental bikes and just had standard ODI grips. And like my arm pump by the end of the day was terrible. Like in all honesty, like every single time we got to the bottom, I was just excited that I could let go of the bars. I would suppose probably another kind of fun, fun, uh, I'm just making sure that my brakes are even here. And we'll really see it once we actually drop the bike. It's a lot easier for me to recognize that. I hear no squeaks. Brake is doing good. Um, probably another fun little thing that we could put on is Bray and I tend to have some arguments on the chairlifts. I don't know, <laughs> they're usually about like very pointless things. I think one time it was about Braden's jumping ability was another, was one. <laughs> Another one was about skiing techniques when you're actually skiing. We we have some very interesting trailer conversations. There's also one about uh, whether or not a trail had a name of a certain name or not, and I was arguing about them. It was named oh like, yeah, that Cat's was, Claw or something. Yeah, it was it was a set of blue trail. I know it, <laughs> it was the kind of the green trails at Island. That was another. Yeah, we tend to have a lot of arguments. They're all in the chairlift, though. Like, they're not really outside The second of... we reach the top, we're like, yeah, it's time to bike. Yep. <laughs> so I am just going to quickly kind of feel like this, see if see how these brakes are. Both of them are feeling pretty fantastic. And this one isn't squeaking anymore. So it may start squeaking. If it does, what I'll probably do is I'll probably actually call Shimano and see the correct fix for this. And they're probably like, you should have squirted lubricant in there. If that's the case, I'm blaming Brayden. Because he told me it was a good idea. I, I said a little bit might be good. <laughs> I, I don't know too much about bikes, though. <laughs> Sam is the expert. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm the one that wrenches on them and cries about it and eventually figures, figures it out. Okay. But this video is already probably way too long. 
So, um, that's how you fix a Shimano... The name will be in the description. I'll actually figure out what breaks on this thing. It's an old, very, very old Shimano hydraulic system. Like, look how bulky these things are. They're huge. Look at those tiny little rotors. Um... But yeah, so that's how to fix those, and also a random tangent on whatever I was talking about for that entire time. So, uh, see you guys in the next one. <laughs>